I've been living in city for forever and I think it was time to have my own place, you know? I mean, I've been looking a lot of places. I've been traveling a lot and camping a lot, a lot of outdoor trips. And I was always camping in places and we have amazing views. And I thought, oh, well, how is it to live in a place like that? But I, I never knew I was kind of like wanted to settle somewhere because you travel so often, you know what I mean? But then at some point I started looking and then these regions here in the Alps, I mean everywhere in the Alps it's amazing, but right here it's, you've got these historical houses. Yeah, I got really uh, convinced by those places, so. Yeah, it looks like you've got I mean, one. Yeah. Road. Here we can follow this path. There's no path here. There right? isn't, there's no road. No, but this is all part of the property already and it goes up the hill. I love the outdoors mm -hmm. and I mean these places are, um, it's, it's a minimal way of living here. I mean I'm starting out very minimal, it's just, uh, just stone cabins here. Yeah. Then, uh, so did you just come walking out here and or hiking one and then... The first time I came here was on the bike, yeah. I'm a, I, I, I've done a lot of bike traveling, so I usually go up to places like this by bike. So you just were biking and thought, what if I lived here? <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've done a lot of bike traveling. Okay. Like I've done two big bike journeys, basically around the world. Yeah, this whole road is pretty bad. Can't say I'm really enjoying this, but um, yeah, have to go through. My experience of traveling is is, uh, is a minimal living. I mean, bike travel is just whatever you can carry on your bike. That's what you own, right? So your idea so. of home is probably already a bit more nomadic. Yeah, my idea at home is it's shifted a bit, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been traveling like for, for those years, but I think I wanted to kind of settle down from traveling. And those journeys took a long time. So it's, yeah, you live very minimally from your bags. And that's what I'm applying here too, with a bit more luxury. But that's how I'm starting. I'm starting here camping. Let's go have a look. Did you see an ad on the internet? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. found it on the internet. There's many places like these for sale. Okay. But they're kind of, I mean, it's very rough, you know. It's just, uh, I mean, it's, it's hard to get to. Yeah. I mean, they're obviously beautiful. That sells it but they're hard to get to, they're in difficult places and they're also difficult to renovate because they're stone, they're farmhouses basically. Stables? Farmhouses? Yeah, I mean, I hear different stories. People would live here from 1800s, 1900s. People would live here, I think, during the summer with the animals, you know. But in winter, there's like three months of snow here. You can't do much with animals. And they're very basic, you know, so the people would live on the first floor and on the ground floor there would be the animals you know because everyone was a farmer uh, here so right now i'm living in this one because it has a floor well the other one has a floor too but it's kind of bumpy and it's it's, yeah. it's tricky it's okay. very old okay. yeah i mean this is what it is then they're dry stone walls you know but they, they kind of patched it up with with clay but um did you buy it, it like basic. this because this looks pretty in shape actually the walls yeah, but it's built well. Yeah. So some of them are ruins. I mean, if the, if the roof collapses, mm -hmm. it goes very fast. But this one is built very well. There's a lot for sale here. So in this region, you could say they're dirt cheap. They go for about 10 to 20,000 euros. You'll have a, a beautiful plot of land and a cabin. Mine was a little bit more because it includes a bit more land. I have about six acres and I guess the building quality of these cabins I have are it's it, it was quite good so we didn't do much with it. And is the roof is there issues is that where there's plastic there? I think it had, you had a lot of leaks, leaks. yeah I mean if, if you'll see it inside that it's the wind blows through because it's just it's just stones and wood 
there's no insulation of uh, something. So yeah, I've been sleeping in my tent for the past days because as you can see, there's like there's a lot of holes in the roof and in the, and in the wall. I've put a stove here and I thought like, okay, with the stove, it's, I, I can make this work, but it's hard to heat. I was having my desk right here and then this side gets warmed up and this side is still cold, you know, so. You have to be right next to the stove. Right next to it because the wind blows through and it's all just, I mean, look at the window. There's no glass or something. It's quite rough at the moment. But you have, I mean, you have a little setup over there. It's really nice. Yeah, because I bought it three weeks ago. And um, I wanted to, like, the, so the first priorities was warmth and making it a, a bit cozy so I could kind of live here. So this is just a quick kitchen setup, you yeah. know. What do you so have? Because number one, you have electricity, which surprises me. Yeah, I have a, I have a small solar setup. So that's like okay. 50 meters from the house because that's a sunny spot. Small setup, but it runs the light in my laptop and it can charge a few things and, and for tools it's, it's fine. And this is... Uh, Gas, that's, yeah. that's propane. Okay, okay. so you yeah, just for cook cooking. Here. You cook here? Yeah. That's You're kind of used to this anyway if you bike camp. And yeah. Well, yeah, I'm used to, I've, I've done a lot of camping and like, so well, I'm camping here, basically. Here. <laughs> and I've done winter camping as well. I mean, so I, I have a very good sleeping yeah. bag and everything is just like, it's all technical. So if you have a good enough sleeping bag, you stay warm. You're not worried about, yeah, I, I you mean, don't heat at night? No, I mean, I've got the stove on now and then, but it cools off right away. You can see there's holes everywhere, so... Once you're in the sleeping bag and you're all zipped up, it's fine. But if you need to, if you need to pee, it's annoying. So this was legal housing. Yeah, you could live here mm -hmm. if you uh, if you don't mind the cold and if you uh, if you can renovate it. So I will work on this roof, which so all the stones need to go off, and like these part needs to be uh, replaced. These are fine because it's built very solid. You know, you can see like this one, two, three, four, five beams, which are quite thick, because everything is very heavy, right? Like the walls are this thick. And then the wool. See, right? Is that the wall? Yeah, it's super thick. It's like 50 centimeters or something like that. Because yeah. they need to be that thick because it, it was drywall. You know, it's all, it's all puzzled on top of each other, all the stones. So you need to replace the roof. What else? It yeah, so in Italy, that's another reason why buying a house like this is tricky because in Italy, the, the building rules are quite strict. Once you change the structure, you, it's, it's getting difficult. So if you want to make a big window here, for example, which would be amazing for the view, right? It becomes very complicated in kind of rules. You need to have a concrete belt on, so the whole roof needs to go off. There's this whole list of things that you need to incorporate into the building. But if you keep the structure as it is and keep the roof as it is, so you only replace these ones and these ones, you're kind of not, I mean, you're touching the structure, but for the rules, it's, you, you're not, so it's, it's more flexible and you can do the work yourself. So you can change the rafters. It needs to be the same material, yeah. right? So this same. needs to be uh, wood, that needs to be stone, yeah. but you can insulate it. But you cannot change the door, you cannot change the windows. It needs to stay uh, the cabin as, as it is. Yeah, but still a lot of work, but that, that will probably start next year in spring because in a few weeks time it probably starts snowing and then it's getting really rough here. So at the moment, this is my uh, tool shed. Here the walls are, you got this, there was a fire here or, or they just made a fire here. So that's why I think they lived here as farmers and not the whole year round. Because I mean, if this was the stove, you know, just build a fire here, you can see what happens. So this is a two bedroom. <laughs> Yeah, I think this could be a nice kitchen and then you walk in here and then you got a, maybe a little living room and maybe downstairs bedrooms. But I'm kind of all figuring it out, you know. As I'm said, I've been here for three weeks and I think you have to kind of spend time in a place, you know, to kind of learn what it needs to be. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> this floor is very dodgy. Yeah, you're right. Actually, you see right through. Yeah, you have to be careful where you step. Yeah. But and where you put your head. Is 
these are going to be low? This so uh, no, these I think these were there for planks, so for storage or something. Okay. So these can, can be taken out. Okay. So I can stand up straight everywhere, and I'm 185, so okay. um, that's okay. I mean, the doors are very tiny. <laughs> it probably makes sense when you remember the way they used to live. They probably were outside all day, so all they probably wanted coming back was somewhere cozy. Yeah. And, and for me, that's the same, because I bought this place to not sit inside all day, right? It's a place you want to you wanna live outside, and the homes are a shelter. The homes have changed the function of the home. Like, previously, people were farmers, they were working outside. Yeah. And the home was a shelter, it's the place where they eat and sleep. I think this should be like that. And I, the historic value of these houses is so beautiful, so I want to keep that intact. So you got the holes there, and a farmer told me they would put like sticks in there, and they made planks, like temporary, and they could put hay on there to dry it. You know, so, so it's off the ground. The, the, there are two other rooms here, but those are very, I mean... Downstairs. <laughs> downstairs. And here you can see where the, the animals would feed, right? Like a trough. Yeah, this is the floor, so right? You so you have to replace... This, is, this has to be all, all has to be done. You can, and you can do that? You have skills? I could do that, yeah. Where it gets difficult is the roof, uh -huh. because those stones are heavy. I've put one slab of stone there on, for underneath the, the stove. But that was, they're heavy. And this is your water source. <laughs> that's my water. Yeah, there is a water connection. So there's like community water here. Okay. Okay. So they have a water. I mean, water in the mountains is never very difficult. Oh, the water connection is actually oh, right here. So there's a meter already, actually. But I mean, this is a plastic hose. And it's very thin. And what happened is that someone had opened the main connection and this was closed. And then in winter, it freezes. So it explodes, so there's a leak here, and there's a leak on the ground there. <laughs> when I came here on the first day, I just opened the tap. After a few days, like the water company, they come with vans, they were, look, they were in trouble. It, and it turns out that the whole mountain didn't have water, like down the slope, because there was a big leak here, and all the pressure was going away, so all the water is, so they is, told you, is no, here. So you have to turn it off. I had to turn it off, and I, I know what the problem is, so I can fix it. But that's the reason why this is very green, like this, <laughs> it spills water into it. So right now I'm working on the solar. So I prepared most of it before I came here. So I got these second hand because you know solar panels, they go a long time. So I bought the batteries, charge controller. How much would something like this cost? This setup is uh, six, 1600. Not yeah. And that's no. enough? I think so. Okay. So I got six of these panels, but I can only use three for the size of charge controller. So the okay. charge controller is 40 amps. The batteries are 300 amp hours. So there's 300 amp hours batteries. Okay. So that's right here. And then a 1500 watt inverter. And this is kind of like what people use in a van, right? Like van lifers. I'm known to that kind of world. So that's why I have this solution. And outside here, I can just read what the percentage is. Yeah, it's 100%. So I'm now I'm using, the lights are on all day. My laptop is charging. I'm using a drill now and then. And it's a very sunny day, so. I think this will work until the end of November. After that, it's going to be not enough sun. And then what? You need to add I don't know. Yeah, okay. I think I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> huh? I mean, I, I don't, so I, there's just a lot of things I don't know yet, how it works out, you know, how it will be with the snow. <laughs> Roughing it in the tent, you know, it's it's fun for a few days and a few weeks maybe, but not the entire winter and it's not uh, mm -hmm. That's a bit too much This is where I have breakfast ah. no, no, this was here oh, wow. you have a fire pit as well. So that's your second stove. That's my second stove. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a movement of people younger people going Back to the cities has been happening for years, of course, and that's why you only meet old farmers here and older people. But I mean, with people, more and more people working remote, I mean, why would you not want to work here on your laptop, you know? What do you do? How are you able to do this? I'm a graphic designer, 
So if I have a table and Wi-Fi, I can perform. <laughs> like I got, I got connection since a few days because I bought another SIM card. Because there is an antenna, so there's a mess on top of the hill. There you go. So I can work now. And that's because of COVID, like all those companies I work for, they get used to uh, the remote working. It's easier to work remote now. I, I mean, I'll, so I, I get very cold, but eventually I could, I could work here. It's, it's nice to com combine work on the computer and outside. Because as you've seen, a land like this has always a lot to do. Like I could start, I mean, when the renovations are kind of finished, a long-term goal is, is, is do some farming, you know, <laughs> do some vegetables, maybe have some animals. But I mean, that's, that's further in the future. <laughs> so this one's actually a, a bit lower. Also an animal storage. But here there's a lot of work to be done. I mean, maybe dig this out a little bit. Potentially another bedroom. <laughs> so low. <laughs> like these doors. So I think when I, if I decide to become old here, I will, I will grow like this because of these doors. <laughs> Maybe soon I have some warm water. But you don't mind. I mean, it doesn't seem like you mind for now just having kind of more of a camp. No, I mean, I've been van lifing. I've been traveling a lot. So this is, this is what I had in my Land Rover, that one. So it works. I just fill it up and then uh, it's a tap too. So you're not in a rush to get, you can still live here. No, right? no, no. The goal is building. The goal is being here. Having it finished in a few years time, that's, that's one goal too. But no, it's just spending time here, enjoying the view, enjoying the sun and this laboring away.